Hello world. So with the abundance of all arch based distros available now, I got the other route and I am trying all the Debian distros that are available because Debian distros they give some unique aspect and some unique ideas which are not found in arch based uh, distros anymore. So what we have today is Neptune OS. Neptune OS is a Debian based distribution. It is German. I got the English now for the translation. And they have Neptune 7.5 ADA. The logo, I don't like the logo because Neptune by default it is a, the god of the sea. So I, I did not see any something blue, maybe only for the download. But what we have is it is based on Debian 11.4 it has a kernel of 5.18 which is a very good place to be 5.18 has a lot of tweaks and other things that help with uh, with Debian because we know Debian doesn't come with I think uh, it comes with 5.15 the LTS version and it has time shift which is good airline theme to them they included Chromium instead of Firefox Thunderbird 91.12 is a it's, it's not a latest version the latest versions now of Thunderbird is in 100s so I think this is the old version still in Thunderbird also they advertise it as a new one and VLC 3.017 they have some tools uh, which they use they have the persistent creator if you only want to use it as a live USB you can put some persistent uh, storage for the features okay these are the main features they have these specialties persistent creator which I talked about the snapshot manager for taking a snapshot remastering also for creating your own ISO if you want why uh, YAV TV is a YouTube downloader simple GUI YouTube downloader if you want to download something from YouTube hardware manager also for installing Nvidia it will give you there's the network mounter encode for encoding for the audio rec FFmpeg is also a recording and there's the Neptune scripts so these are basically it let us start and see the installation and we will also have a look inside and see what they have so we plug so we plug the neptune os iso inside virtual machine and here we are here we are in the menu here in the desktop so let us start with the installation next and next let us put uh, erase by default i think they they use uh, by default they use ext4 we'll click next we'll put we'll call it neptune let's say and use the same password so it's currently straightforward they created the neptune with the swap ext4 they are using I would have preferred to see butterfs especially for SSDs but for a virtual machine ext4 is excellent we finished everything we have all the data and we click install I already installed it so without much delay we will start with the installed version okay so we are in the login screen and if you notice here the desktop session is plasma what is interesting, I saw all of these by accident, E16, E16 KDE and E16 GNOME 2. I don't know what they were trying to do, I tried EXC, E16 GNOME 2 and E16 KDE, they did not work these sessions. But for E16, let us try it and check it. So this is E16, Enlightenment 16 version. I don't know why they installed it. 
but there is nothing there there is no shelf there is uh, even there is only the the mounting and and there is no theming there is some maintenance you can do here etc etc and i think it was put by default by by accident uh, this one so let us log out I would have loved to see E16 themed by by these people, but uh, we go. But for me, I did not see any theming for this one at all. Okay, so we are now in the installed version. I think they installed everything concerning KDE inside. Everything you desire is inside. Let us first start with the terminal, and as I see, there is no terminal here. I am disappointed so we open console I think they have console with KDE okay so we start with console so first let us check how much is installed so installation is 8.87 gigabyte which is a lot too much let us check the of course we have ext4 as as also the file system ext4 but 8.87 is too much we will see how what caused it if we want to check how much we are using ram we are using 833 megabyte it is uh, big not that big but because they installed all the kde it might uh, be like that and another thing we will see what causes all this okay so basically they have the total usage is 8.4 gigabyte i used ncdu by the way the user is 7.2 gigabyte and the var is 932 if we look at the user the libraries of course there is the the kernel also taking space library office chromium Thunderbird okay these also take much space for the share of course the local they have very big chunk of the local the icons also very big the fonts and the wallpapers <laughs> what is so interesting is that the wallpaper 73 megabyte and the wallpaper they have is a very basic one go figure and they have Caden live it's it's uh, it's really a heavy installation 8.8 gigabytes you have all these data that you have so enough of the terminal and we'll come to the applications if you look they have used this uh, this menu for kde did not use the default one we start with the office of course this library office all included ocular and retext I was surprised to see retext because not many distros put it. I don't use it uh, frankly, but I use uh, Zim Notes. I already put a video on using Zim Notes. It's a very good productivity uh, program, especially if you work with Markdown. But retext is also a simple Markdown editor. For example, let's say if I write, uh, let me uh, put some examples for markdown if you know the markdown you can put a markdown document and you put here preview it will render it for you as a markdown so it is good that they have it i haven't heard it before this distribution so it's very good when sometimes you distro hop you learn about these programs and maybe you will use them i use them but you can use it also if uh, there is something uh, very simple you can do you can use this one so this is about the retext the other thing we will cover uh, this is the utilities utilities nothing much they have a latte dock also that's why I told you it is heavy I think it is also available ah, this is the latte dock so they have also a, the latte dock you can place whatever you want Many distributions they like the latte dock with the panel. I don't know. 
it is a matter of taste so they have grub customizer which is good for the development okay qt5 graphics that's why you see they have gimp and inkscape also in installed image magic is good they they have it and for the internet they have the chromium of course also they have uh, conqueror and they have thunderbird these are also heavy programs for multimedia of we have Caden live audacity also they have audacity and they have encode so audacity and encode but encode i think they are the one that talked about as uh, as their flagship and record fm mpeg I tried first to install Voco screen, but I found out I cannot install Voco screen because this one is a Voco screen clone or fork. And if you notice here, based upon the work of Voco screen and G source code, so this is Voco screen new theming and new additions because uh, the theming in Voco screen is not that good. So we have this one. What I like is to check the video and if you notice here many codecs are not present but at least x264 is present let's say if i want to record mp4 you can record at x as x264 so this is their addition also by the neptune team so what else games okay no basic games they have they have kde partition magic they have all the things about kde is already installed dolphin they have time shift which is also a good addition to have uh, time shift and they have edge top let us get so now we are using two point uh we are using 963 megabytes it is a small it is a, it's a little bit heavy but it is kde so you expect these things especially if you install all the things there remains one things that they are known about they have their neptune scripts so if you want to talk about their scripts they have some scripts they are inside user bin they talked about in their website one of them let's say if you want is if you have butterfs you can you can use butterfs dash snapshot so you have to be root so this script what does it do if you put sudo butterfs snapshot let us do it it will tell you it will create for you a butterfs snapshot if you log in again you will see this image but of course you it will not boot because butterfs is not in our system we have ext4 so this is basically useless unless in the future they install uh, they put by default a butterfs snapshot the other thing that also can if you want to activate swap they have also a script activate swap.sh so if you enter it you also you have to be root please enter the size of the swap let's say i want it 1000 enter the target i pressed enter so it's at where it put it formatting swap file done activating so this is also uh, good they have also a tutorial they, they, we did not see them here on the menu that's why uh, they they're very bad at marketing these things they should place it at least somewhere here so that everyone can see it so this is a tutorial and they tell you okay let us learn for ls so we put ls okay it gives us everything then say let us put ls dash l so ls dash l these are all the things next they tell me cd test so we don't have uh, they, they have test here so cd test and afterwards press ls it is good for uh, any new user to look at it and 
to just have a trial but they did not give it at least somewhere here to put tutorial so you double click it and you start learning another thing we will talk about is remove orphans let us quit this one control C remove orphans and they remove old kernel so if you have an old kernel you can use this one and remove orphans also you can use it these are two scripts they have also an RPM an RPM if you have an RPM and you want to use a to check what is inside or you can you want to package it again so you put an, an RPM the RPM that you have and it will extract it for you they have also list packages it will give all the packages that are installed by size and if you notice here the Linux dash image is big chunk there's Thunderbird Chromium open GDK etc and the fonts 87 these are the big chunks that uh, they have so you scroll you scroll you scroll I think it is around 1500 1600 we will not cover them let us quit they have also one for RAM usage it will talk about all the things that are taking gram from small to large and if you notice the plasma shell is taking every uh, plasma shell 351 latte dock this is a nice by the way this is a nice uh, idea to have this one ram that uses dot sh it's a nice script so that's basically what they have in, in store for us they already uh, let us check uh, let us check the desktop the background so this is I think the ugliest wallpaper they have put we have they have very nice wallpapers by the way I think they come from KDE most of them let us put this white tiger okay so this one is a bit nicer maybe they can put the logo here inside the blue but that's just me I like to have some art so it's not bad it's a little bit heavy this distribution uh, bear in mind this is Debian and they are using a, a relatively not an old kernel they are not there yet there's some tweaks they need to figure out in order to make it more appealing to the users to the average users because all these scripts are hidden the terminal is hidden everything is hidden just to give a flavor but they did not give a GUI alternative for their terminal uh, scripts so that's it for now and we will back in another video